hello good morning start to a new reading vlog i have a reading update i have been very slowly working my way through tess of the duvervilles by thomas hardy uh this is my classic pick for the month and i have made it 30 percent of the way through or page 144. i've just been reading a little bit at bed every night um so it's currently wednesday so we're already almost halfway through the week we need to Pick it up and get moving on this. I finally feel like I understand what's going on enough to kind of give you the synopsis. Okay, we have a new battery. We are ready to finally talk to you about Tess. Okay, so this one is about a girl named Tess Duberfield. And in the beginning of this, her father finds out that they are actually related to a family called the Dubervilles, who are very, very wealthy. So her dad just hatches this plan that Tess needs a husband. So he decides to send her to go live with the Dubervilles and kind of help them out on their farm and hopefully marry her cousin, Alec Duberville. This way she gets into the family, the money is shared between them, you know, all that stuff. So Tess really doesn't want to do this, but of course it's what her family wants. So she agrees. Right from the start, father and mother Duberfield not the best they do not care about what Tess wants at all they're just like do this for the family you know whatever so Tess goes and her cousin Alec is a creep I do not I don't like him at all I hated reading the chapters with him and right from the beginning he is just forcing himself on Tess and she's trying to be polite so she agrees to his advances until it becomes clear that he has no interest in marrying her and she is just kind of kicked out and sent off to work on a farm and make her own money now that the Dubervilles don't want her um and it's sad so far obviously because Tess was just really trying to make everybody happy she was just trying to do what people were telling her to and it's really unfair that she was taken advantage of and then just punished more for it. Um, so yeah, it's been sad so far. You know, I didn't read Virginia Woolf's little blurb on the top, but it says, we must call Hardy the greatest tragic writer among English novelists. And I feel that. Like, I think it's just going to keep getting worse. I just, poor Tess, I don't see her having a happy life. I hope some happy things happen for her, but it just doesn't feel like that's going to be the story. Um, because of course this takes place in, I have no idea actually, the 1800s? Um, Thomas Hardy was born in 1840, so I'm assuming this takes place in the 1800s and just the way women were treated then, especially unwed mothers. It is interesting that he wrote a book about a woman like this in this time period right yeah it was published in 1891 so yeah so far this book is just about the struggles of being a woman so my plan is to listen to a bit more of this audiobook while i'm working today i would like to get 70 percent of the way through the book but that's a lot for me for one day. I think I've been reading probably like 10%. I have a lot on my TBR this week, so the more I could get done of this, the better. Okay, that is it for now. I'm gonna get back to work. I'll let you know when I have more thoughts about this, and I'll talk to you later when I pick what physical book I'm gonna start next. extremely tired it's because I am it has been a minute since we've talked because I have had one of the busiest weeks of my life and I have done almost no reading okay let's recap the week first thing Monday morning Poe here perfect timing bud Poe here got surgery uh, he was neutered and he has been recovering from that he seems fine no real pain besides the very first day 
um, and he's on pain medications and really it's just been a struggle to keep him calm. He is not allowed to be hyper and running around and playing with the cats and he really wants to do that. So the poor boy has been very bored and he just wants to play and be hyper but he's got to be calm for two weeks and not rip his stitches out. So he got that done on Monday and then Tuesday and Wednesday just slowly recovering. It's Friday now and he is pretty much back to normal. Um, he's still wearing the cone and he still has the stitches and everything. And then on Tuesday, just like all hell broke loose at work. Um, it has not been this busy since January. I don't know what's going on. Well, I do know what's going on. I was filling in for a coworker that was on vacation this week and then I'm going on vacation starting Monday. So I was trying to get all of my stuff done in time plus all of her stuff and it wasn't fun. I ended up working two 12 hour days this week, um, which I did it to myself. I probably, it's complicated. Nobody was telling me that I had to get all this stuff done, but I'm kind of in charge of myself in this job. So if I didn't get it done, I would be letting other people down and I don't want to do that. Like it's my responsibility to have this stuff done. Um, so yeah, long story short, I got everything done. It took a lot longer than I wanted it to, but now I can go on vacation and not worry about work until April 1st. That is, what's today, the 22nd? That's nine whole days of not worrying about work. In terms of reading, you have not missed much. Um, I am farther than this. I've been listening to the audiobook and I wanna say I have three hours left, but I listen on two times speed, so one and a half hours left of Tess of the Duverbills, and I'm really liking it. She said surprisingly, I have not had good luck with classics this year. The two classics I've read so far have been two and a half stars each. Um, so for a while, I was thinking this was going to be the same. I just, it was slow. I wasn't really liking it, but the more we're getting into it, I like it. Like around here, like 350 pages, this much left to go. That feels right. Something like that. Um, so yeah, I listened to a big chunk of this yesterday while working and just, I really got into it. Um, what did I tell you last? Tess was pressured into doing something she didn't want to by Alec Duverville. She was basically assaulted. Um, not even basically, she literally was assaulted. She didn't want to do it. She only did it to be polite because that's what was expected of her. I don't know, like classics are weird, right? Because it's like, I don't want to spoil books, but also it's a classic. It came out like hundreds of years ago. So minor spoilers for this, but I won't, I won't give away everything. Um, so yeah, Tess moves on with her life. She meets a new man. He is pretty great until he finds out about her history. And the whole time they're like dating, you didn't really date back then, but you know, whatever they did, courting. Um, the whole time she keeps kind of saying like, you know, you won't feel the same way about me once you find out about my past, blah, blah, blah. And like, he's not taking her seriously. He's like, you're a young girl. What kind of past could you have? And then like, it comes out and he basically abandons her because fuck men. Uh, so yeah, Tess is just kind of back where she was. Just abandoned, again, for things that aren't her fault. So she has now reconnected with Alec Duverville and we're gonna see where it goes. He says that he wasn't aware of anything that went down and if he had been, he would have been a part of her life. And oh my God, I was getting heated at this man last night. So they run into each other again and he's like, how you been, you know, what's up? And she tells him everything that happened. And he's basically like, well, I'm a priest now. And so like, you can't feel as bad about what happened. Like you can't be upset anymore because I'm upset enough for the both of us. Like you're not allowed to be upset because like you're a woman and you seduced me which she didn't, she was not interested in him. Um, so he's blaming her for it and then saying like, I have enough remorse over what happened. Like, you're not allowed to be mad at me. But like, 
he's literally not apologizing. He's just, you know, making it seem like he's a better person now. So yeah, this guy is insufferable. Um, and yeah, I just hope Tess stands up for herself. So only a little bit left of the audiobook for right now. As long as I don't fall asleep, I'm going to start The Chain by Adrian McKinty. Um, it is, I forgot to mention, it is the Realmathon Peace Weekend. I can't remember what it's called, but like any book you finish within this 48 hours is extra points. So we are going to try and finish like basically my entire TBR. That was supposed to be the plan this week and then I didn't read anything. Um, but you know what? At least I can get my chunky classic of the month out of the way. So we're just going to try to be motivated this weekend and not just sit on my phone and do nothing. Okay, that is enough talking from me. I'm going to start this, read at least a few chapters, and then um, probably switch over to Tess. Hello and happy Saturday. I had to think about what day it was. For some reason I want to say Sunday. But we have had quite the productive Saturday morning so far. Saturday early afternoon I should say because I didn't actually get out of bed until 10 a.m. So what have we done? My partner had a doctor's appointment so I went to him with that and then after we got Duncan and I've just been reading a little bit more of the chain and I edited recorded the voiceover and am now uploading my April reading journal plan with me. So all great things. Before I get too much more into the chain, sorry about the glare, let's hold it over here. I wanna tell you what this one is about because I don't remember, I don't think I told you last night. This one is a very well-known thriller. Um, I feel like everybody has read it besides me, but if you've never heard of it, this one is about this chain and they do refer to it in the book as the chain and it's basically this network of people who are all being forced to kidnap other people's children and then pay ransom to get their own child back so we are following this mother-daughter duo um the daughter kylie was kidnapped chapter one held at gunpoint taken from the bus stop and her mother rebecca got a call that said, we have your daughter, you need to pay this amount of money and you need to go kidnap another child to get her back safe. And the people who have Kylie literally said, if you don't do this, we will kill you because our son is in danger. So it's this chain reaction of, you need to keep kidnapping other people's children to get your own back. But we're flipping back and forth between Kylie and Rebecca. Kylie is obviously very, very scared. She doesn't seem like she's going to be mistreated. It really, seems like these people mean well they're literally just doing it because they have to to get their child back you know they do have her locked in their basement but they've set up a bed for her and they have food and they have books and coloring books so like they are trying to take care of her they just are doing what they have to and now we are following Rebecca who doesn't know what to do. She, of course, she wants to call the police, but that was one of the first thing they said is, if you call the police, we will kill your daughter. So she's just trying to figure out, one, how am I gonna get all this money? And two, how am I gonna kidnap another child? Like, how do you do that? Very intrigued so far. Um, reading 50 pages felt like nothing. Sunday. I got makeup all over this book. Um, what did I even use that was pink? I didn't. Okay, well we'll clean that later. 
I am happy to announce that I finally finished Tess of the Duvervilles by Thomas Hardy and it wasn't a two and a half star. So happy that I can finally read a classic this year that I didn't hate. Um, I decided I'm gonna go with a three and a half star. Well this wasn't a favorite of all time and it was a little boring. I liked it overall. I don't think it needed to be this long but um you know, we really got the point across that Tess was struggling in life after the things that were done to her, what happened to her, all that. So I was really, really surprised at the ending of this. I was not expecting that from Tess at all. And all I can say is good for her. Like, is this the first good for her novel there's ever been? Oh yeah, I'd be really interested to know, like, not that Thomas Hardy started this, um, but of classics that have this kind of good for her um, mad woman trope. That's um, really interesting to me because I really like those books nowadays and to see them in classics when I was not expecting that behavior. So I really, really liked the ending. It definitely solidified the 3.5 star rating solidified that I liked it a lot. I was enjoying it throughout, but for me, the ending really determines the final rating. Like if it has a bad ending, it can knock it down a whole star. So now that this one is done, unfortunately it will not count for the extra bonus points for this weekend because I only read like a hundred pages of it during the readathon weekend. And you know, it's just not fair. I didn't read the entire thing this weekend, but we have made progress on the chain. I forgot it in the other room and I'm not gonna go get it now. I think I made it to part two last night, so I know I'm a few hundred pages in, maybe 200 pages. And I'm enjoying it. It's fine. The writing is not the best. So it is a male author and he's writing from the point of view of a mother and her 13 year old daughter. And the daughter just doesn't read like a 13 year old. Like she definitely reads more like a six year old in, some scenes and like an adult in other scenes um and yeah even the mother character I'm not loving the way that he writes women it's just not super believable to me but the action in it is great so part one of the book is kind of what's said in the synopsis the kidnapping happens Rachel must continue the chain or her daughter will be killed. She must kidnap another child. So now in part two, I think things are switching. I don't know if we're following Rachel anymore. I've heard that people really enjoy part one and then part two kind of loses them. So we'll see how we feel about it. We just got back from coffee, as you saw. I didn't read too much there, but I do plan on finishing it today. I hope so. again. I just got done finishing my April TBR. Little sneak peek to that because yeah this will be up before. Yeah trying to get some filming done and editing done and uploading done and scheduling done before Florida just to have some things going up while I'm away. So yeah I was thinking of filming a haul 
but I just don't feel like it. And honestly, I'd like to buy some books while I'm in Florida. I'm hoping I can find like an indie bookstore close to where we're staying. Um, so yeah, just wanted to check in because I did start an audiobook. What did I decide to read? I decided to start the audiobook for Bonesmith by Nikki Pau Preto. I know I pick like the thickest book I have left on my TBR, but the audiobook was available. This is a library book that I'd really like to get returned before I go to Florida because one, I'm not bringing any library books and risking them getting damaged. And uh, two, if I can finish this by tomorrow, I can return it before we leave and then somebody else can have it. So that's the plan. It is like a 14 hour audiobook. So listening on two times speed, I could potentially finish it in seven hours if I you know, spend all my time listening to it, but I also have the chain to finish. So no promises there, but I'm really trying to read as much as possible before we leave. We started this book. I guess I should tell you what it is about. Um, I'm only like a chapter in. Um, I don't even know if I've made it to chapter two yet. I'm definitely in chapter two, if not chapter three. Either way, I am... I'm not yet 50 pages in, is what I'm trying to tell you. Um, so this one, we follow our main girl, Ren. Yeah, her name is Ren, and she's a bonesmith. And this book is really giving me Gideon the Ninth vibes. So Ren being a bonesmith, she also has a helper who is called... Okay, I can't remember what they call it in this, but Ren has a helper. And they are basically going through trials where they are banishing ghosts maybe they're using like bones as weapons so that's why i'm getting the gideon the ninth vibes so ren is trying to pass the trials to be the valkyrie of the house of bone in the dominions where magic welled up from deep in the earth the dead lingered violent and unpredictable unless a bonesmith severed the ghost from its earthly remains so that's what she's doing she's getting rid of ghosts I guess. So far we have a little bit of rivalry with her cousin who is also a part of the trials. And um, yeah, it's just action-y. I like learning. There's like different levels of ghosts depending on how difficult and dangerous they are to banish. So that's all interesting. And I've heard that the weapons in this are really, really cool because they're like all made of different bones and stuff. So excited to get into it more. I started packing. I'm almost done packing. I think I'm gonna go finish the tiny bit of laundry I have left. Maybe clean the bathroom while I listen to my audiobook. That's one of the last big cleaning things I have to do. And then sit down and read the chain for a while because I still need to finish that today. All right, that sounds like a plan. First step is going to be to wash off this lipstick and change back into my comfy clothes. <laughs> morning it is monday is it even still morning is the question it's 11 30 so technically still morning okay updates i did finish the chain last night and it is already back at the library my partner took it this morning because he works very close to the library um yeah so thoughts about that it didn't get better um, all of the complaints I had still stand. The writing actually somehow got worse in the second half of the book. The plot became really, really predictable and like the author wasn't being subtle about it, but for some reason we knew what was going on, but the main character didn't. And then she was just annoying a lot. Um, yeah, so unfortunately that one is going to get a 2.5 from me. It started out strong. It had a really good idea the execution just wasn't great i will say i would love to see this adapted into a tv show or a movie probably a tv show i think that would be incredible to watch it on screen and then they can kind of fix up the ending a little bit it just felt too easy like i don't know it was uh i know you have to suspend your disbelief in thrillers but this one it was just too much too unbelievable
some bad news. Uh, number one, I did not finish Bonesmith today. And number two, I actually think I'm going to DNF it. Uh, it's not anything wrong with the book. I just don't feel like young adult fantasy right now. I made it to 40% of the audiobook today. And honestly, yesterday when I was listening to the beginning, I wasn't paying good enough attention because I was just confused by everything that was going on. And I really think it was me. I don't think it's a bad book. I didn't give it enough of a chance to tell you if it's a good or bad book. I just know I don't feel like reading it right now. I definitely don't feel like restarting it to understand what's going on. And uh, yeah, so that one will not be counting for any Realmathon points or as being read for this month, but that's okay. It's not a book I spent money on and uh, I got it from the library for exactly that reason. And I really live by the saying, life is too short to read books you're not enjoying. So maybe I'll come back to it someday, just not right now. Um, a part of it is that I am so stressed about this trip and getting everything done and trying to read all of the books that I wanted to, that like a book that wasn't really holding my attention or that I cared about at all, I'm not gonna waste my time to finish it. So since it is Monday night and we leave tomorrow, now seems like a good time to close out this vlog. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you read a good book today and I will see you again soon. Bye.